Alvin Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Jordan Bateman. He's the Communications Director for the Independent Contractors and Business Association. His website, icba.ca. Welcome back to the show, Jordan. Thanks for having me. Jordan, it may be surprising to people, but uh, in some areas we have an acute labor shortage. Can you explain where and why? Yeah, we actually uh, are in desperate need of workers in different parts of the uh, province. Um, you know, if uh, if you're looking for work, uh, looking for honest work, the trades, there's plenty of opportunity there. So every year we do a wage and benefits survey at ICBA, and we talk to our member companies, and there's almost 2,000 of them. Uh, you know, what is it you're looking for? Where do you think wages are going to go this year for certain trades? Um, you know, what, what are you finding enough of? And what we've discovered is this year, three quarters of our companies say they don't have enough qualified workers. Uh, they don't have enough qualified workers it, that they require. Uh, that is up from 59% last year. So, you know, in one year, we've seen a 16-point increase in that. And to give you some perspective, every single window company, glazer, glass company that we talked to, every single one of them uh, said that they cannot find enough glazers uh, in the province of British Columbia to do the work. And, you know, it's starting to slow down construction a little bit because, you know, they're so busy and people have to, you know, there's only so many hours in a day you can work, you know, people have to be able to uh, to fill these jobs. So, you know, 93% of the companies that have work with pipes say that they don't have enough pipe fitters. Uh, 91% of our sheet metal uh, companies say they can't find enough workers. 89% of electrician and plumbing companies. So, you know, these are, like, you know, huge opportunities for people who want to come into the trades. Now, people make fun of it. I was just mentioning off-air, I was watching a sitcom, and they said, oh, well, it looks like our kid will be going to trades college instead of university. Don't these people make good money? Oh, they do. They make excellent money. And, you know, first of all, like to start off uh, basically anywhere in construction, you're going to make about 18 bucks an hour uh, just to start with benefits. And, you know, you work your way up to uh, become a foreman, you'll see a lot more than that. You know, some of our trades make, uh, you know, $45, $50 an hour, uh, you know, doing the work. The bigger thing is wages are expected to continue to increase because, of course, you and I know that you know, supply and demand. Uh, if we are, are running out of workers, you've got to pay more to get them. Um, our companies say that over the next two years, 2018 and 2019, they expect to raise the wages across the board by almost 10% over those two years, um, paying people more uh, in order to do this work. You know, by comparison, inflation will be less than 4%. So, you know, when you're talking about, you know, seeing pay increases, it used to be, you know, you'd send your kids to go work for government. Um, but, you know, those government workers, they can only dream of that 10% kind of bump that, uh, that uh, you know, for example, an electrician or a glazer or a framer or a welder or a pipe fitter is going to see. Why is there a shortage? Is BC training enough people and can they import people or is there uh, interprovincial barriers to people coming here if they have the qualifications? Well, there's a few, there's a few different things. Um, you mentioned the stigma, and over the years, this is uh, probably the number one thing that's hurt people coming into the trades. There's this idea that you know the tradesman is this you know dumb guy who's good with his hands, but you know can't get into university or college or do a white collar job. Um, you know, there's that the way that people kind of look down at folks who you know take a shower after work and not before work. Um, you know, it's frustrating to us at ICBA because, you know, a number of our companies were started by, uh, you know, frontline workers. And if you have any kind of entrepreneurial bent, the trades are a great business to go into because you can, you know, apprentice for a few years, uh, work your way up in a company, strike out on your own when you have the uh, skill set, uh, start your own crew. And, and, you know, every single one of our 
you know, giant company, construction companies in BC started with one guy, you know, learning the trade from someone else. So the opportunity is there for, especially if you have an entrepreneurial spirit to make, uh, quite a bit of money to have a very good lifestyle. So this, you know, kind of looking down and wrinkling up your nose at people in blue collar trade, uh, is not helpful. And, you know, you see it from politicians. I mean, you don't hear about anyone talking about trades. You hear about people talking about the tech economy and, you know, Andrew Weaver, um, you know, kind of deriding uh, construction jobs in around Site C, for example, you know, just a bunch of dirt movers who need to do, you know, better things with people. That, that to me is very frustrating because uh, these are good jobs that take care of families and that offer lots of room for growth. Well, who built the universities that he taught in? <laughs> well, that's exactly <laughs> it. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's a societal thing that's happened where, you know, you just kind of, yeah, I don't know, it, it's just frustrating for us at ICBA because we see so many people who have, who have had good livings in this. You know, even, you know, construction folks who, you know, send their kids off to do the white collar jobs now instead of uh, encouraging them to pursue their passions. And that that frustrates us as well. So there's lots of opportunities in trades. If you if you want work, you can definitely find work. Um, you don't even have to have you know the skill set to start. They'll train you. They'll they'll teach you how to do it. They're that desperate for workers. Um, they're willing to work with you through it. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely an important thing. Vancouver Island especially acute there the um, the labor shortage. And we talked about solutions to it. You know, some are, you know, having teachers, for example, and, and parents actually begin to, you know, encourage kids to go into trades. Some of it is, uh, you know, maybe loosening some of the rules around, you know, bringing people in. You know, on Vancouver Island, you know, there, every, every construction company is desperate for people, but, you know, you bring up the idea of someone moving from somewhere else to go work there, and, you know, the, you know, kind of the, the, uh, the, the, the Pacific Ocean, the uh, Strait of Georgia gets really, really wide because, uh, you know, the Islanders don't want, uh, you know, people moving there, whether they're temporary foreign workers or people from other parts of Canada. Um, housing costs are so expensive. I'm not sure you could you know, get into the market there anyways. There's a lot of issues around it. So we need to tackle this all over the place. Um, that's why governments spend so much time talking about um, kind of underserved demographics in construction. You know, you can find... You know, more women to, to put in construction, First Nations. That's uh, so why like Kinder Morgan is such a positive project because it, it's, going, it's going to spark so many uh, young First Nations workers uh, for trade. Um, yeah, there's lots, lots of openings there, but lots of work to be done. How can you encourage more women to get into it? Because uh, friends of mine who've gone into construction and mechanical engineering tell me about the horror stories of sexual harassment. Yeah, it is uh, tough in, uh, in, well, in any industry, as the Me Too movement has shown. It's not something that is uh, only the traits. Um, the traits certainly have a lot more, uh, you know, young men, testosterone-fueled young men uh, that you've got to deal with. But, you know, the times are changing. We have uh, training here at ICBA. We're putting, you know, hundreds of people through uh, various uh, levels of training as far as how to deal with, uh, uh, you know, employees of all different uh uh, gender and color and uh, backgrounds and skill set. Uh, you know, part of it is training the leaders of that industry. Um, it's getting better. It's not as bad as it, it used to be, but, you know, obviously there's always work to be done. We'll have more with Jordan Bateman right after the break. I'm Kelly Jennings, CEO of PowerVan Solutions. PowerVan is a cloud-based provider of auction, inventory, and finance solutions that make buying, selling, and financing vehicles more efficient. PowerVan Solutions trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol PBX. For more information, please visit us at PowerVanSolutions.com. Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. A work program is planned for our Finland property that contains diamond-bearing kimberlite. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ADD, and the Frankfurt Exchange, symbol 82A1. Please visit our website at arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. Welcome back. We're chatting with Jordan Bateman. Jordan, if there is already a shortage of people in the trades, can BC build the Kinder Morgan pipeline plus put together three major transit projects at the same time? 
So the answer is yes. Um, you know, I'll, I will have one little caveat about the construction industry. Right now, it's booming. We are starting to see very early signs of a slowdown. Um, and part of that is to do with investor confidence. There isn't a lot in British Columbia. Um, I think if you talk to the folks at you know, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, they'll tell you that you know, their small business uh, confidence is starting to sag in BC. There is a sense among business leaders um, that things are about to turn sour, and a lot of that has to do with the government currently occupying Victoria and, and who props them up. So um, the answer is, yeah, look, we got to keep these folks working. Uh, there's about almost a quarter million people in British Columbia who rely on construction uh, to feed their family. That's uh, about 9% of the provincial economy. So if we stop building things, that's a huge chunk of our GDP that's going to evaporate. A lot of people who are going to be struggling. Um, that's why we're, well, one of the reasons why we're so passionate about Kinder Morgan and these other projects is it keeps people, uh, it keeps people working, it keeps that kind of baseline of construction going on. And, you know, some of these are longer term projects. I mean, construction, by definition, you know, you, you start building something and then you're done. So, you know, you want to make sure there's always something else in the, uh, in the offing to, to go to work on. So Kinder Morgan buys a, a few years of construction. Uh, it's, uh, same with Site C Dam buys almost 12 years of construction, it gives us that opportunity to uh, to continue to fill the pipeline with other projects. Moving on to uh, another area, the carbon tax, has that been a job killer? Yeah, the carbon tax is ridiculous. And, you know, we've talked about British Columbia for so long, and it's kind of baked into everything now. Um, but, you know, it's gone up again. It's now $35. They've gotten rid of the revenue neutrality clause because, the NDP government needs the money, needs the cash to spend on all their pet projects. So, you know, no longer do we get it in tax cuts. Um, you know, Alberta signed on to the carbon tax for one reason, one reason only. Uh, Justin Trudeau told them it was the only way they'd get a pipeline to get their oil and gas to uh, Tidewater. Um, you know, if Kinder Morgan falls apart, Alberta will pull out of the carbon tax, rightfully so. You'll see Manitoba and Bolden to fight it. Uh, one of the maritime provinces, New Brunswick, maybe, and possibly those coast New Brunswick, they're looking at just simply renaming their gas tax, the carbon tax, and using that to get around Justin Trudeau's national mandate. Uh, it, it's troublesome. Where the carbon tax kills us is in, you know, it's just another, um, you know, hurdle, uh, another way to slow down our economy compared to the United States. And they already beat us in you know, general tax rates. They already beat us in, you know, speed of permitting, uh, in getting things to yes. Uh, you know, they're aggressively going after investment in, uh, in the United States. I saw a stat today that this month, 16, 16 states out of 50 reported the lowest level of unemployment they've ever had, which is astounding. 16 out of 50 states are at the lowest level of unemployment ever. It's, it's, uh, amazing to see what's happening with the economy there. It is supercharged and flying fast. You know, during the election campaign, you know, Donald Trump talked about getting back over 3% growth. The economists and experts all said, no, no, that's impossible. We're in a slow growth now uh, economy. You know, the kind of 1.5 to 2% that's the highest, you know, the Obama years, uh, as the Obama years rendered, that's as, that's as good as it's ever going to get again. The fact is, you know, you, you cut taxes, you cut regulation, you make it easier for people to invest. Guess what happens? People invest their money, and all of a sudden projects start going on, employment grows, uh, people feel more confident about making the big purchases, and that sparks more action. I mean, it's pretty amazing to see what's happening there. And the carbon tax is just one of the pieces of the puzzle to make sure that Canada is missing out on this North American economic boom. We'll have more with Jordan Bateman right after this. I'm Brian Fowler, president of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted historic engineer gold mine in the Atlant District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. 
Welcome back. We're speaking with Jordan Bateman. Jordan, what needs to be done to get the Kinder Morgan pipeline construction back underway and completed? Well, John Horgan needs to butt out. And, you know, as hard as this is to, for him to say, um, he's on the wrong side of this. Um, we're starting to see the opponent's arguments against Kinder Morgan, Kinder Morgan completely fall apart. Uh, you're seeing the public opinion shift very strongly in favor of the project. You know, where it used to be, you know, 48 to 44 in favor of the uh, project. Now we're well over 50% in British Columbia. We're well over 50% in the lower mainland for this thing. Um, you know, this argument that, you know, the people of British Columbia don't want it is proving false. Um, it amazes me that John Horgan, you know, before the election talks about how, you know, people in BC don't want it. That's why we're going to oppose it. And, you know, <laughs> the same polls that once showed, you know, more opposed and supportive have now flipped and he ignores these polls. I guess it's only picks the ones that he likes. Uh, you're seeing the arguments around the First Nations fall apart. This idea that every First Nation is against it has been thoroughly debunked by people like Ernie Cray. Uh, Mike Smith has done a great job writing about this in the Vancouver province. There are um, uh, First Nations who have huge economic development plans built around this pipeline, getting it done, getting uh, you know getting this uh, going forward. So that's falling apart. The professional protesters, I think, are starting to wear on people's nerves. Um, the grandstanding, uh, the grading, uh, you know, David Suzuki flying in, showing up at a you know protest and flying out. Same with Naomi Klein. You know those kind of elite manifesto elites who, you know, live in their fancy uh, homes and jet around and tell everyone else to live differently, but they themselves are are uh, guzzling uh, fossil fuels. Uh, all of this is going on. The safety issue, you know, this isn't going to stay in the ground despite what David Suzuki wants. This oil is going to come out, and if it doesn't flow by the, you know, safe use of pipelines, it's going to flow in rail cars and trucks that run by the Fraser River uh, and other rivers throughout uh, B.C., all of those arguments now are crumbling, and um, my sense is that you know John Horgan uh, needs to start thinking very carefully about you know his political future. Uh, I know he's tied it to to uh, Andrew Weaver, and, and that was a condition of Andrew Weaver's support. The truth is, Andrew Weaver only cares about one thing: proportional representation. That's central to the long-term future of his government or of his party. If uh, John Horgan walks away from Kinder Morgan. The Greens will stay quiet as church mice uh, waiting for their uh, prop rep uh, referendum. So uh, my advice to them would be, you don't have jurisdiction over this. It's time to uh, wave the white flag before this gets even worse for the B.C. economy. Who's paying for these anti-pipeline protests? Well, Vivian Krauss has done incredible work on this. It's uh, generally American companies, uh, American uh, charitable organizations, uh, who, of course, have a vested interest in uh, staying... Um, uh, that's, that's the interest in keeping it uh, in the ground in Canada. You know, Canada, or keeping it flowing to the United States. You know, Canada uh, subsidizes the American oil industry by 40 to $100 million every single day, depending on whose estimates you uh, you read. Um, we give them a discount on our oil because we have no other market to sell it to. And if you had an Asian market to sell it to, you could uh, compete with it. Uh, they'd have to compete for that. So, very problematic. Um you know, it's troubling that you know we love the Americans so much that we want to just give them a hundred million dollar check every day. But this is the uh, weird world we're in. Jordan, thank you so much for talking with us. Thanks for having me. My guest has been Jordan Bateman, communications director for the Independent Contractors and Business Association. Their website icba.ca. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Questions for the show or our guests can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.